see or hear about people getting hurt. It definitely makes me feel unsafe being around here. Now on KGW News, more gun violence in Portland with a man shot and killed on a TriMet bus. Plus, um, we know at this point that there are at least 20 victims. Police are investigating a major crime spree in North Plains with dozens of cars stolen or broken into overnight. And we've got another heat wave on the way with 100 degree plus temperatures in the forecast. This is a KGW News Special Edition. And we start tonight with developing news out of Southeast Portland. Police say a man died after a shooting on a TriMet bus. It happened late this afternoon near Southeast 26th and Hawthorne. Police say there was a disturbance on the bus before the shooting, but they aren't elaborating on what exactly led up to it. The victim died at the hospital and the shooter left before police arrived. Southeast Hawthorne is closed between 26th and 29th Avenues while police investigate. We spoke with a neighbor who says, unfortunately, she's gotten used to this kind of violence nearby. Honestly, it was not that surprising. This particular block in general is very active with like a lot of crime and there's always police cars. This marks Portland's 56th homicide of the year, according to the Oregonian, surpassing last year's total of 55 homicides. That also makes this year the deadliest in the city since 1994. Okay, so the Washington County Sheriff's Office is on the hunt tonight for multiple suspects in a crime spree early Saturday in North Plains. You can see on this map that it happened really all over the city. There are 21 victims so far, people whose vehicles were either broken into or stolen. Crystal Kumwe spoke to a woman whose car was taken right out of her garage. Monica Piñalosa has lived in her North Plains neighborhood for four years. Like we're a small community, so it's really nice. This neighborhood has is like a dream come true. But early Saturday morning, she woke up to a nightmare. So we woke up around um, 5 a.m. to my uh, garage door being open and my car being gone. Her car was unlocked with a garage door opener inside. Neighbor security footage shows a car stop right in the middle of the street in front of her home. Here's another angle. You can see suspects open her garage at the top right corner and several people running into her home. I mean, I'm terrified. Um, the first thing that I think about is the safety of my children. While inside, the suspects saw her purse, a video game console and other items. After they knew they had my stuff, that car took off and then my car took off. Piñalosa was not the only victim. Far from it. We know at this point that there are at least 20 victims uh, with two cars stolen and about 20 plus cars uh, kind of rummaged through. Sergeant Robert Rokhuizen with the Washington County Sheriff's Office says it all happened in the span of 45 minutes. Somewhere between five to seven male suspects went through several neighborhoods checking car doors and getting into vehicles. This is not just you know, a, a couple of kids out doing something. This was so highly organized and, and we think they specifically targeted these neighborhoods. Piñalosa uh, says some of the stolen uh, items were found at John Luby Park in Northeast Portland. However, right she's not sure so she'll ever see her car again. They haven't found it yet, so my, my thought is that my car's gone. She has words of caution for others. Just that one time you let your guard down or, you know, it's something bad can happen. Just lock your doors. Make sure you lock your doors. That's all I'm saying. Crystal Kumwe, KGW News. An RV fire in southeast Portland killed one person early this morning. Fire crews say it broke out near southeast 88th and Claiborne next to Glenwood Park. They worked to make sure the fire didn't spread to other vehicles or trees. Crews found an adult dead inside the RV. They're investigating how that fire started. Okay, we are expecting another round of hot weather this week, and this, of course, comes after nearly 100 people across Oregon died from the extreme temperatures that we had back in June. Multnomah County officials say they'll announce plans for cooling centers tomorrow after a briefing with the National Weather Service in the morning. So we'll bring you that information when we get it. But in the meantime, let's bring in meteorologist Joe Ranieri. Joe, when is that hot weather supposed to hit us again? Well, it's going to slowly start to warm up over the next couple 
couple of days. Upper 80s tomorrow, a little bit warmer for Tuesday, right around the low 90s. Then the real heat, Brittany, arrives by midweek. Wednesday, temperature of 97 degrees. Uh, record is 102. I think if we see any records fall, it's going to be on Thursday and into Friday with temperatures anywhere from 100 to 105 degrees. Of course, the record for Thursday is 104. I'm forecasting 104 and staying very hot on Friday. A record is 102. So we could be seeing some records fall along with some very hot conditions heading into the later part of the work week. As we head into what's going to be the second heat wave of the summer, uh, make sure you to get plenty of water over the next couple of days, especially through basically Wednesday all the way into next weekend, believe it or not. Also, don't spend too much time outdoors and check on family and friends who might not have a way to cool off. Some, not everybody has a AC in their apartment or their house. And of course, this is an important one. Do not leave pets in cars. So as we look at the setup for the forecast over the next couple of days, we're going to be under again a dome of uh, warm air, a really strong ridge of high pressure that's going to start to really develop heading into Wednesday afternoon. So highs jump anywhere from 100 to 105 by Thursday into Friday. Some models are suggesting we could be seeing highs close to 108 by Thursday. The other thing we're tracking is some smoke and haze. You'll notice this model is showing more of a southerly flow heading into Thursday into Friday as that southerly flow switches, we'll be seeing more smoky and hazy conditions. So there's a chance that it's just gonna be very uncomfortable the next couple of days, but not only that, also seeing some smoke and haze and some of that smoke and haze could actually prevent us from seeing too much of a warm up. Regardless, though, I am tracking some uh, big amount of heat heading into the next couple of days. I'll talk more about that and just how long it's going to be sticking around coming up in my detailed forecast. Brittany, back to you. All right, important to know. Thanks so much, Joe. Fire crews down in southern Oregon continue to make progress on containing the second largest wildfire in the country. The bootleg fire in Klamath County is now 96% contained and good news here. It its size has not changed in 10 days. Firefighters, well, they'll keep patrolling the fire's perimeter as a precaution for the foreseeable future. Those flames will continue to burn until there's just a significant amount of rain that falls or possibly even snow. Downtown Portland just had its first big event in almost two years with this morning's Providence Bridge Pedal. 10,000 cyclists and walkers bonded over the beauty of this city after a really rough year and a half. The event was canceled last year, but it came back for its 25th anniversary. All morning long, people rode and walked various routes, some up to 26 miles long. It's now evolved much more into a community event. And it's not a race, it's a chance just to get out and celebrate your city. You know, so often people are inside. This is the perfect opportunity to get exercise, fresh air, and the benefit to socialize with other people. Going across the bridges on your bikes, you zoom across them at 60 usually, and now we get to stop and see the river. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. It is such a fun, cool way to see the city. Love to see this event come back to Portland. And get this, the money raised from registration for the bridge pedal goes to help vulnerable patients at Providence. Great event. Okay, so today is the 50th anniversary of what's become an Oregon treasure. The Enchanted Forest welcomed its first visitors five decades ago. I'm sure so many of you have memories. And the last year has been really especially challenging for them. But as Tim Gordon visited the attraction today, he found out that it's going strong. Follow the trail, that's what they say. Okay, here we go. A special Sunday at a special place. People come to the Enchanted Forest south of Salem to celebrate. It's the theme park that Roger Tofty dreamed up and then built into the hillside along I-5 opening on this day 50 years ago. Well, it's quite a milestone. You know, we started with just a family. This place is still a family-run operation, with a 91-year-old continuing to lead the way, cruising around the park on his scooter, patching things up where it's needed. The attraction is looking good today. Humpty Dumpty is refreshed and looking on with a smile. Taya Campbell but is smiling nature, too. I'm always a hiker, so like nature and then having a little incorporation of like kids playing here um, really means a lot to me. The past year has been the toughest. COVID's arrival meant the 2020 season started late and was limited. Then the Beachy Creek fire roared nearby. It didn't touch the park, but it took the lives of two family members, breaking hearts. Then this year, February's ice storm did major damage to the Enchanted Forest. Trees down and attractions damaged to the tune of nearly a million dollars. A groundswell of support raised about 800,000 to help the place recover and survive. 
so that people like Peter and Leah Rivendell can enjoy an old favorite. I've been coming since I was six years old and I just, I love coming back. It's always so neat to see new things that I hadn't noticed before. The park has grown. There are a few fun rides to enjoy too, but it is really about being part of the fantasies in the forest. Come on! that make this place worth celebrating for so many. So, bring on the 50th anniversary cake. Well, we dedicated a lot of time and effort, you know, to make it as good as we could and kept it adding through the years. And uh, so it uh, brings back a lot of memories for a lot of the people, you know, they've been here through different generations. So, 50 years today, What's the future for the Enchanted Forest? I asked Roger if it could go another 50 years, and he said, sure, why not? In Turner, Tim Gordon, KGW News. Well, are you looking for a new furry friend to adopt? How can you say no to those faces? The Oregon Humane Society just took in 45 dogs and puppies from shelters in Oklahoma to give them a second chance at finding a home. The pups flew into Oregon as part of Fetch Fido, a flight, which is an Oklahoma nonprofit started by a former Oregonian. How cool is that? The program helps transfer pets from areas where there's more animals in shelters than people who want to adopt. These dogs will be available for adoption beginning this week. The Oregon Humane Society is still closed to the public because of COVID, but you can make an appointment uh, for adoption on their website. So many good boys and girls.